So this is build log number one for the exoskeleton leg build that I've been working on. Now this has three primary goals that I'm designing around. First is it's gonna protect against overextension for any of the given joints. It'll also protect against potentially like an impact. Like if someone was to swing a bat and hit this, it's gonna resist that uh, bending deformation in this direction as well. This also has passive inline tensioners here that actually add a little bit extra bounce in your jump and a little bit more energy absorption in those falls. This isn't stiff enough that it impairs my movement because you don't want your leg to just be stiff as a board, but it just gives just enough that it takes the edge off, especially if I was to start adding more weight, which I'm gonna be doing for the third goal, which is building ballistic armor for these guys. Now, the ballistic armor is gonna be, you know, depending on the size of the panel or how strong I'm making the armor, like what caliber I'm intending that particular panel to stop, it can be hard to hold them in place because they're a little bit heavier, a little bit clunkier, and just straps aren't good enough. So this frame provides a good mounting point for me to be able to adjust and build around while trying to keep in mind mobility. So the panels can't be too large to where they start inhibiting your movement. Um, it is a little squeaky. I've got a lot of updates to do here um, before I take this to the parkour gym as well, if they'll let me wear it. Um, but we're gonna go over all the ins and outs of this, where I'm currently at, and the current struggles that I have at the moment. So grab a coffee with me, and let's go over what I've learned so far. Let's start with the frame itself. Now there's a lot more that went into the little decision of choosing this than you might initially think. So I started with actually using 2020 aluminum extrusions. I just had these laying around and I modeled a perfect negative for my parts to snap into like for the hinges. And then I could use these tracks with little bolts to be able to tighten to them and use them as an interface point that is adjustable. The problem is, is that those threaded snaps being in aluminum are not very impact resistant. If you put a lot of strain on heavier springs or hit it, it tends to gouge out the aluminum or strip a part out, which is not ideal. That's where I switched over to using steel threaded rods. These are really strong, and by using two of them, I could still get a pretty flat part, certainly much flatter than these, and I could actually use a nut to adjust either tension for a spring, like in this case, or to adjust where I might mount an armor panel to. And the bite on the nut is a lot more impact resistant than that of the friction fit snap-ins for the aluminum. And then as far as actually interfacing with these, I just created a break in the hinges mount here, which allows a little bit of space when I push these in, I can then clamp this down, which the threads in the rod itself also help to bite into the casing, further strengthening the bond that happens right here at this interface, making for a very strong connection point that's a whole lot thinner than that of the aluminum extrusions. Little decisions like this are really key for rapid prototyping, as well as around your human body because it's an organic system, very challenging even with a perfect digital model to design a system around that's ergonomic, actually feels good when you're moving because you have different tissues that are uh, have various consistencies, they change in different motions, change shape and all that. So it's great to have something that you can quickly adjust and tune to take measurements on later rather than making it all rigid and you've got to reprint or redesign every single time something doesn't quite feel right. And a little behind the curtain with me, I still have a full-time job. So all the little optimizations that I can make like this to help speed up my workflow are huge to make sure that I can get these projects done with just those evenings and weekends after work. Let's get on to the fun business, which is going to be designing the actual hinges. Now we've got, of course, three main hinges. We have our ankle, the knee, and the hip joint. And then we do have the toe joint as well, which is on the exo foot build, but we're not gonna cover that one today. But before we can actually model these hinges, we do need a lifelike digital file of our joints themselves so we can get the right sizing, know where to be able to put straps or other mounts in that range of motion because of course your body does change as you go through different motions. However, it's pretty hard to replicate these structures in a dimensionally accurate way in a digital file. Basically what I mean is you can't use the traditional measuring methods to be able to recreate this for modeling around. So I can't just use a tape measure and go, okay, this is the circumference of this part, let me make a circle of that size and squish it by, oh, I don't know, maybe use some calipers, but it all changes based on your motion. You have to create this file multiple times, which would take a ton of time, and it's still inevitably going to be inaccurate. So that's where the beauty of a 3D scanner actually comes into play, because you could scan these organic models at each position, and then you get a very precise model that you can trust and build your system around. Now luckily RevoPoint sent me their Miraco Plus 3D scanner for this purpose, and this can be used to scan big parts like car parts or very detailed little models like this little figurine that they sent along if you wanted to clone this uh, product here. But basically it creates a 3D model that you can then, you know, 
print out, or you can use that model for reference to design other systems around, which is the purpose that I'm gonna be using that for. So I can start a new project without the need to connect this to my laptop, which is great for mobility. I can just run with it and then export that file later. Now this is an all-in-one scanner, so it can do the small to large parts with that single frame accuracy being up to 0.04 millimeters to really pull out those fine details, even if you're a little further away, um, as it can be aided by its 2x infrared optical zoom rather than just the digital zoom. Now for the ankle support system for this suit, I'm gonna scan my ankle with different positionings of the joint to be references later on as I design these hinges. So to start, I'm placing markers around my foot to more cleanly identify placement for tracking. Now I'm starting with my shin being at 90 degrees for that first positioning scan, where I found that the far mode on the scanner works best for this. This way I can keep a pretty comfortable distance and it can track the scan to keep it all as a clean relative mesh. Both near and the far modes have a nice visualization. They show you real time if you're getting too close or too far from the part while it's gathering data. And this does run at a high frame rate of 20 FPS. So it's able to keep track as I move around, even though I'm not the most steady in this awkward position. So once I've concluded the first scan of my ankle's position and it all looks good, I can then proceed with cleaning up the mesh. Now, as I touched on earlier, I'm all about efficiency and really making the most of my engineering time. So this is where all that I do is click the one tap edit option on the scanner itself. Then I export this as an STL to the USB stick to chuck it into whatever 3D modeler that I wanna use. So as a rehash, all I have to do is scan, then do the one tap edit option, export, and I have my model. And this is all that I need in most cases for engineering, as I'm interested in the reference points and dimensions from these complex or organic parts to be what's captured. So from here, I'll simply cut the points that I don't want and then reskin that exact replica with a low poly mesh of my target appendage to design around. And then this is how I have my reference. So I repeat this process for each needed angle for me to design and conceptually test my hinge builds around. And do check out my Patreon, it's linked in the description there. I'll be posting some of these meshes as I create them for you to be able to download and then make your own bionic or cosplay parts out of. All right, so that's my process by using the Miracle Plus to quickly and effectively get these models. But if you have a project that's a lot more fine or discrete details that you want to extract, or clean up, there are more tools to explore in the device itself for this, like the lasso to select and delete sections, you could remesh, among other tools, and then even more in the RevoScan 5 software, which is free to download from their site. So if I wanted to model a really complex part like this seashell actually, I could do the full scan and then do a little bit of light cleanup of the file itself on the device before exporting it into RevoScan 5. Now the first step I'll do is the isolation tool, which will remove some noise that may have been collected around the part. And you can adjust the sensitivity here if it's encroaching on the actual component's mesh. Then you can have it automatically detect where the holes are. You can click to verify to fill them, um, where I recommend simplifying the mesh so it has a little bit cleaner topology after all of this. And then you can mesh the model. And bringing that all together, this is how I design these systems that work pretty well for my build, and my range of motion. The simplest joint, as I said, was the knee. Now this could actually be done in two different ways. You could do a two axle piece where they move together and that's actually gonna more closely mimic your tibia rotating along your, your femur there. However, I went ahead and went with the single axle approach because this is still a pretty close approximation, but it's a lot stronger and more resistant to being able to actually bend it down in this direction from splaying apart. And I can make a much more sturdy hinge this way. And also, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm gonna try to be able to see if I can get the hinge itself to actually be part of the armor system, since it's hard to actually put armor around these moving parts. So I'll have the hinge itself be that armor panel. I'll shoot it and see if I can stop some rounds with it. So these hinge joints have three primary layers. There are the two outer layers that are bonded to the same upper chassis, and then there's the lower armature. And this is sandwiched between two roller pin bearings. So these are gonna help really reduce that friction, but these aren't just clamped down with full force by this big bolt in the middle. There's actually a little axle sleeve on the inside connected to the lower part, which is just the perfect amount of spacing. Like I'm talking 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters max variance that I was adjusting to get it so it's just barely holding these tight when I really crank this down, but it's not so much that it's causing any sort of friction. So these are still very loose. 
while not having any wobble whatsoever, so they're very strong. Now that axle sleeve is really important because it does two other things. It also houses a bearing so that if you were to push on this, there's no friction because that bearing handles that frictional component. And it also mechanically isolates the bolt from any rotational movement because these are gonna go through hundreds of thousands of cycles and if there was not complete isolation to that main bolt, then over time that bolt would actually loosen up that nut in the back and it would just fall all apart. So you have to design everything to be able to handle the amount of cycles that your joints go through when you're walking and running on a daily basis. This hinge also has these extrusions which come through to mechanically bite into the upper piece to add a lot more strength from shifting so it's not just the bolts that are holding it in place. Really, the bolts are holding it down, but these positive and negative insets are actually what hold such a tight connection for these pieces, and when made out of metal, will show an impressive strength improvement there. This hinge also took on a little bit more of an organic look to it with the interfacing for each of the 150 degree and zero degree backstops. So the best way to design a strong stop in this scenario is to have as much surface area and contact points as possible. I also have these two bolts here that help prevent it from splaying apart, and they also have bushings along them to help guide the tensioner cable. Which, speaking of that tensioner cable, that's what runs up to my extension piston here, and I'm using Kevlar cord. So this is rated up to 600 pounds of tension, so it's very strong. Um, it's abrasion resistant, takes high heat, the, the only problem that I've been running into is that it's pretty slippery. So most of my knots loosen up over time, which I'm actually getting already with this guy. I don't have tension here, I only get it to here because it's already been slipping a little bit. So I've ordered some Dyneema cord. It's another very high strength cable, but it essentially has zero elongation and no creep. So it should be a lot better than the cord that I'm using here. So that's something that I really need to tune up before I go to the parkour gym. And the other big flaw that happened with the update of this hinge, by making it stronger and having more interfacing and getting the bolts in, I ended up having more of the hinge take up the actual chassis for the frame which ended up impeding my extension piston here. So it runs right into it, really putting a, putting a damper on things, which is too bad. So I need to find a good middle ground between the thinness and the strength of this one and the full range of motion that I have with this one, which it's really, really hard this close up to really, to really get this to bend. Obviously there's a lot of tension on here. There has to be a lot, otherwise you wouldn't even feel it on your legs. So there's a lot more than it really seems like initially on these guys. But you can see how thick this hinge was and the newer one is actually stronger and quite a bit thinner. So um, I'm gonna have to find some middle ground there to allow less of the chassis to be eaten up by this guy here and less to be eaten up by that upper hinge. And that all leads us to the tensioner here. So, ow, whew. oh my gosh. Took off a little chunk of skin there. Anyways, that leads us to this tensioner guy here. So these are tractor springs. Um, they're very strong and they're very robust, making it actually perfect for this, right? You don't want these weak little springs that aren't gonna help you jump. Um, these are very smooth and they work great, but you gotta watch out for them. And they also are a little bit explosive. So I did design this pretty well and I'm, I'm not worried about it exploding in my face. It's very strong. But um, I did break this hinge actually when I was kicking some cinder blocks. I was testing an exo foot design that I have, which I'll touch on in just a second. I wanna go over this tensioner now though, first. So it's just a pretty sturdy block on the back that I then tighten these nuts up to hold it in place firmly. And the upper piece is just a shell around the spring. Now I have this shell here to avoid the spring from pinching you or pinching your clothes. These springs will absolutely draw blood if, you're, if your skin gets pinched between these coils and they, they get you there. So I have this shell just to help shield that. And it rides along the upper rail here. And it actually has a couple of bushings in there since these are threaded and these bushings help this glide a little bit smoother. And you'll hear a little bit of that clicking. That's just the bushing having a beveled edge as it glides over those threads. And then of course the cable just comes on through my guides here and I've got a groove that ties in to the lower hinge. On that lower armature, I've actually got an axle baked into that model that I can wrap that Kevlar around. So let's focus now on the hip and the ankle joint here. So I did build a pretty rough ankle joint that many of you have probably seen on my Instagram or my TikTok where I was kicking a cement block and I was doing a lot of different kicks with it. Um, and I needed something to support my ankle and protect my foot, where I just had a cross arm ball joint attached at the bottom with a hammered 14 gauge steel plate that I just drilled and ground down to shape. Then at the bottom of my shoe, I just had a 70-75 piece of aluminum alloy that's quite strong here. 
and this is to protect the bottom of my foot and spread out some of the impact on those sharper edges of that cement block. Um, I've hit them with hammers and shot them before and they crumble at that hard impact, but when you're kicking them with a shoe that has a little bit of cushioning, that little bit of cushioning really ends up distributing the force and as hard as I was kicking them with the assisted device, um, it would fling them, but they just wouldn't break on that impact. I needed something, I feel like I needed something hard on the bottom of the shoe. Something, if, if I'd put this on the outside, I might've gotten a good crack for those, for those blocks. This obviously has a lot of issues. I mean, one, it was getting all bent up, but the biggest thing is that um, the range of motion is terrible, right? Like this has zero flexibility. It's literally just a flat plate that I whipped up just to do that demo. And then the ball joint is really only like a degree and a half of freedom and has no overextension protection here. So that is no good there. The challenge is that it has so many different degrees of freedom. So you have, of course, the major rotation, but then you have that pitch rotation as you're to roll your ankle. And then there's also that lateral rotation left to right. And those are all really hard to work around because if you were to look at the outside of the ankle and you're to rotate it, this side gets longer where this side actually gets shorter um, because of course the fulcrum is in the center of your biological joint. And it's your ankle, right? It's literally got all of your weight on it, so it's gotta be strong too. So my design is a standard bearing inside with this mounted external cap being that extension protection for that major rotation with that roll or pitch rotation being controlled by the inner portion of this part of the hinge here and being stopped by this tab that comes out. Now, of course, the 3D print, this is not strong, but the intent would be that this would be CNC'd out of metal uh, or 3D printed out of metal. That's the goal anyways. And then for that third partial degree, which is basically moving your foot left to right, I just created a little bit of flexibility in the front here to rotating your foot left or right, just in the front of that major rotation hinge. And then of course you've got your toe joint, which I have on this model, but I don't have on my legs yet. So that concludes the current state of these hinges. But in the background, I do have some extra armor panels that are actually brewing. So I do have a molded plate here of these 3D printed panels, which I will then shoot uh, with more ballistics and see what this is able to stop. I'm experimenting with some new materials actually to try to get something um, that's performing even better than that uh, nanoparticle infill that I had previously, like what I did for my Red Hood build. I'm trying to make it lighter because the more panels that I add, the weight just keeps going up. So I do wanna try to make something that's a little bit lighter weight. And if you wanna see the results of this along with what other materials I'm testing, click the subscribe button. Um, that really helps the channel grow, helps uh, recommend it to other folks out there, which is really beneficial to help me continue to pay for obviously all these different resources and things that I need to build these, to share the builds with you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you in my next video.